Before I start the show, I want to thank Donner Ski Ranch for hosting the Legends of Tahoe event this year. Donner's going to stay open until you guys stop going. And by the way, if you bring a season's pass from any other mountain from now to the end of the season, they'll give you a $25 lift ticket for the day. The F and Rad Snowboard Podcast is presented by Skyview Campers, Never Summer's innovative take on the tiny home. Designed and built in beautiful Colorado, check out skyviewcampers.com. Wired Snowboards builds quality snowboards by hand, 10 minutes away from my house. Visit wiredsnowboards.com and order one today. Fixed bindings are easy to adjust, long lasting, high performance bindings built to have less impact on the environment. Check out fixbindingco.com. Rip Curl Outerwear, strength, durability, and performance. Designed to search further in the snow, head to ripcurl.com and check out the anti series jacket. I can't wait to rock this thing. New Greens, 100% organic, vibrant green juice. Buy yourself some at newgreens.com and use code F and Rad at checkout for 20% off. The Boardroom Snowboard Shop, best selection, best prices. Vancouver's premier snowboard shop. The Boardroom ships to anywhere in North America. So go to boardroomshop.com or visit their stores in Vancouver and North Van. Support also comes from Mount Seymour, Grouse Mountain, Cypress Mountain, the Pro Standard GoPro Accessories, and our friends at 1910. You can use code FNRAD at checkout for 20% off at 1910.com. The Haven's a center for transformational learning located on beautiful Gabriola Island. Plan a visit at haven.ca and use code FNRAD at checkout to save 10% of their Come Alive program. As Season 9 of FNRAD draws to a close, I'm bringing you a few mini interviews from the Legends of Tahoe event at Donner Ski Ranch. This week's guest is Tom Shea. From 1985 to 1991, Tom Shea published the very first snowboard magazine. It was called Absolutely Radical and eventually became International Snowboard Magazine. If you've ever wondered why, you're just about to find out. Tom's vision for snowboarding drove the progression back in the 80s, and his love for snowboarding continues to this day. I was surprised and so stoked to get to ride with him at Donner. This is one of my favorite interviews I've ever done, <laughs> so please sit back and enjoy this interview with Tom Shea. You know, I mean, look, I'm a, I'm a child of Thrasher Magazine. Sick. That was our Bible. Totally. I grew up in San Francisco skating. Mm. I skied in Tahoe most of my life and uh, came up to uh, really ride at the Second World Snowboard Championships. I just got into snowboarding that winter. Soda Springs. Soda Springs. Yeah. It was a great scene. 200, kind of like today, kind of like 200 uh, heads, you know, just making it happen, having a great time. And um, it was with my buddies and we were competing. It was fun. You know, it was like, why not? Let's buy an entry fee let's get our bibs let's go race let's go do the half pipe and then at the uh award ceremony i remember that uh ken Achenbach went up to get like you know his prize from tom sims it was probably like third place half pipe or something like that and as soon as uh as soon as he was going to hand him the check tom pulled it back from ken and said you owe me some money for those snowboards and that was like it ken Achenbach uncorked <laughs> dropped about 60 f-bombs big a lot of finger pointing back and forth, a lot of shouting and there's just like 200 300 people all just watching this melee go down and i just kind of thought to myself somebody's got to record this moment here <laughs> that's amazing. <laughs> and amazing then and then that was just kind of a joke we were saying to each other yeah and then on the ride home we were kind of talking about we somebody should do a mag we should do a mag and it was just you know a, a momentary thought and uh it kind of stuck with me though and so that year, I sort of started figuring out how to write a magazine. Oh, my God. Uh, Bob Klein was in instrumental to, like, help me navigate Lake Tahoe, all the spots, all the locals, meeting Keith Kimmel, Alan Armbrister, Terry Kidwell. Oof. Um, you know, just the, the people who were making it happen, thrown down the way they were, you know, took me to the Tahoe City dump, you know, 
which was you know walking distance from me. yeah unbelievable watching watching arn brister throwing big old you know methods and you know two-handed hand plants and you know uh terry kidwell was just launching errors off this kicker this one hit kicker um just everyone was just launching the birthplace of of yeah freestyle snowboarding yeah. was right here was that moment with exactly. those moments yeah and, and I, I yeah, yeah. and it, we, it was just like right, right in front of us and i had a camera and i was taking pictures and that was some of the stuff keith kemmel was there that was some of the stuff that made it into the first issue yeah, thank um, you yeah oh wow sick. I, know, I saw that that's that's so that's funny. amazing so it, it was was it absolutely radical first was yeah that, the first yeah. edition was called absolutely radical snowboard magazine yeah uh you know kind of like a mouthful but that's kind of how i felt about snowboarding back in the day sure you know that's how i you know we were all pretty yeah, that's stoked. what this is fucking rad it's exactly like, i mean you yeah. know it was there were hard to put words into what mm-hmm. we were feeling back mm-hmm. then and um i put the first edition out and i remember giving it out at the uh world snowboard championship i'd driven up from san francisco with fresh freshly printed magazines i had about 500 of them in my my car were you nervous or were you excited you know I was really excited, but yeah, I was wondering, like, I didn't really know, like, what, what the reception would be. Because, you know, I'm, I'm some kid from the city, right? I'm yeah. Not, I'm not a pro snowboarder. Um, I've met these people, and they're all stoked that I'm doing it. Cool. Um, and I love it, right? I love snowboarding. And it turned out to be uh, just handing it out like a newspaper boy, just like, <laughs> you know, who wants one, right? Yeah. As yeah. soon as I landed. And all of a sudden, it got really quiet in front of the lodge. And I just looked around for a minute, and there was about 100 people just sitting there reading. Sick. Of course. Not saying anything. Yeah. yeah. Reading and flipping and turning and, you know, going, you know, pointing. And suddenly there was more noise. And the next thing I know, Jake Burton Carpenter walked up to me, and he had a copy of it. And he said, he said, uh, I want to buy the back cover of that. And I had given him a chance to get the back cover, but he never returned my phone call. Oh, wow. Um, I gave every manufacturer a chance to to be in the first magazine. And, you know, I'm Tom Shave from Absolutely Radical Snowboard Magazine in San totally. Francisco. Please call me yeah, back, Jake yeah, yeah, Burton yeah, Carpenter. Yeah. He's like, no, <laughs> it's right, not going right, to happen. Right. Joel called me back. <laughs> Joel was in there. That's you so know, sick. Ghost Gate called me back. <laughs> sick. Um, and a bunch of others. And so um, that kind of launched it at that point. So were you out of pocket at that with those 500 mags? Yeah, no. Were, I, you, we, were, we were you print, like in the hole? I think we printed up point? like uh, 3,000 magazines. And the deal was this, because, you know, I it took a year to like put this thing together, write the stories, do the photography, do the layout. You know, it, like, you know, I'm learning as I go, right? Yeah. Find a printer. Um, and it... The way the hardest part was how do I get this into actual snowboarders' hands? Because mm-hmm. I don't know the distribution. I don't know hundreds of magazines, people. right? So I asked every, um, I gave every manufacturer the opportunity to buy three hundred copies for fifty cents each. Nice, and that's smart. In if, in exchange for a full page ad, and then you get those three hundred copies to your customers. That's amazing. So I had ten. That's really smart. That. Paid $150 each, so I had $1,500. My print bill was exactly $1,500. <laughs> I broke even the first, not including my time. Right. Right, of course. Right, right. Um, That's pretty rad. I kind of broke even on the first thing, and I was like, oh, interesting. This could do. So this is how it works. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Very unconventional. But, I mean, Joel had copies. He gave them out, you know, as, at a snowboard shop, and it's like... You know, that's how it got into people's hands. And then I didn't really know if I was going to do a second issue, quite honestly. I didn't know. I didn't have any grand plans. But I remember uh, we had a coupon in there that said, by April 30th, if you want, for five bucks, you can get six more issues for yeah. next year's edition. Because we, we did this in March of 85. And I remember on April 11th, which was my birthday, I remember my my at my apartment building in San Francisco in the hate. Kate Ashbury, my mailbox was stuffed so full of envelopes. Ah. There was like 60 envelopes in there from around the country. I love Just by that. chance on yeah. April 11th. And it had literally scribble scratch coupons clipped by kids and saying, so rad, I want five, I want, you know, another year's issue. Here's my five bucks. And you got a t-shirt. 
And so I, glad at that, that point you I did was kind that. of That's in. amazing. Yeah, yeah that, I, I felt pretty obligated. Yeah, I got to come through now. Yeah, that's so yeah. sick. That's what a great story. Yeah, it was something that was just unique for that time for me. Right? Yeah, I never heard this around. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, everybody's got an origin story, right? Yeah, and it, and it was all like you know, I, I look at today. You know, we're we're literally forty years from that, from when I started snowboarding. And we, I'm seeing all these people that I know, these people that I consider legendary godfathers and godmothers of our sport. Yeah. And, um, it, you know, we were just lucky that we got called to do something in this. Like, we went snowboarding. Somehow we figured it out. And we got called on day one. And we found each other and we supported each other. And it wasn't always pretty. I mean, you know, it was hard. Sure. You know, th what we were doing. Relationships. But it was us yeah. against the world. Yeah. And it was, uh, it reminds me of all the political work I've done right. since then. Right. The decades of political work I've done. It's like building coalitions, you know, uh, building an army of true believers, you know, getting your messaging right. You know, you're trying to change something that didn't exist before. Yeah. And you're up against a ski industry, a patriarchal ski industry that hates you. Hates you. Hates Unbelievable. You. Yeah. Um, except for people like Norm Sailor at Donner Ski Ranch and, and a couple of others. That, you're finding these pockets yeah, where the, you're accepted. Exactly. Baker, that, the yeah. how it's up at Baker. Exactly. And, yeah. They, they loved yeah. us, right? Yeah. And it was like so unusual to, mm -hmm. to have that. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah. the the addiction is there too. I've, we've talked about it a lot on, on Mike about... You go snowboarding, and that is it. It's now, it. now you just want to go snowboarding. It's it. It's, and I yeah. saw you shredding yesterday, and I was blown away. I don't know why I thought that you were maybe like a nerd that made a, <laughs> I am a magazine, <laughs> no, but <laughs> you rib, magazine. dude. You rip. Like watching you yeah. shred yesterday, I was like, "This is dope." Yeah. Meet your heroes. Meet the guys that that did this thing because they're fucking awesome yeah, and yeah. the thing that makes it awesome is that riding these boards on these mountains is better than any drug i've ever tried any oh, yeah. thing that i've ever done it's yeah. like the best thing it's, you can it's, fucking it is do. A, it is what we call the pure stoke and yeah i guess got it this weekend i i, I had the chance to run into evan fiend mm. at, the, at the lift line mm -hmm. yesterday at nine o'clock in the morning he yeah. looked really hard at me and he knew exactly who i was and i looked at him and he goes tom i haven't seen evan in 30 years and he goes i said yeah and he says evan and i'm like oh my god dude you know, last week I was showing my 19 year old son, like the first copies of the magazine. He's kind of interested in like what I did back then. And I was looking at an article in a first or second magazine with Evan Fien in it. And a week ago I was thinking about Evan Fien. I was like, I wonder what fuck, what's bro up to? I haven't seen that guy in so long. We had so many good days on the mountain, such really great adventures and freaking I, I just manifested right in front of me <laughs> yesterday and we went riding. It was amazing. Yes. And Evan's still charging. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Like one of the greats. Yeah. Just, one of the greats. Just a pure hearted person. Well, you're you're a part of the first generation of snowboarding that um unfortunately, uh, in some ways, snowboarding was progressing so much year to year to yeah. year. Yeah. That by the time I got into it in eighty eight, yeah. I, it's embarrassing to say I didn't really understand what Terry Kidwell's legacy was and I yeah. didn't care. Yeah. I was like Craig and yeah. Sean and then the next generation, the next generation is always yeah. looking forward. But as soon as we look back, yeah. Chuck Barfoot, Tom Sims, um, yourself, the uh, these legends, that era, yeah. it's I'm jealous. You guys had powder days yeah. weeks after it snowed. Yeah. You had it's fun to have the fight up against why can't we buy a lift ticket? Yeah. Why can't we make you money? What do you think we're gonna do here? And yeah. then you know, going and riding places where yeah. it's accepted and seeing pockets of, you know, a Sean Farmer, a Steve Link, like, yeah. like shredding for, for shredding sake. Yeah. And I think that's what the, the perspective that time gives us, you know, it's yes. like we haven't been old enough yet to want to look back. It's been so new and so different. And every year there's something, you know, a trick that happens or somebody goes bigger right. or a, a technological advance happens. And, yes. you know, it's sort of like, that's the way the sport was created. It was just what's next. Yes. Yes. We hardly looked back. Yeah. And, and now finally people are starting to look back 
And there's a whole history in a library, fortunately. Yeah, one I mean, of my favorite things about looking back is this event and the absolute, here's where the rubber meets the road. Yeah. If you wanted to know what boards are better, Burton or Sims in this era, pre-1990, yeah. you don't see a lot. Oh, I saw one elite and the guy was ripping it. Yeah. But these Sims boards oh. are they still rip yeah. and they're they're designed yeah. to ride this stuff. Yeah. And Sims was just kicking ass at yeah, that. Well, point. he's a California yeah. born and bred. Yeah. I mean, I remember, you know, I would get calls from Jake in the middle of the night and you know, he's Jake. I mean, he's the he's the leader of our industry. Yeah. And he would really give me a hard time. He would be in obviously had read the last edition of the magazine and he'd say, Tom, there's way too many people in the air. And, uh, you know, and he was, thank you for he, sharing well, that. I mean, right. he's conscious about yeah. like growing the sport from this like very yeah. big global perspective of totally. like mountain managers. He's the one who even told me that, you know, no mountain manager wants anything absolutely radical on the mountain. That's amazing. And I kind of, what a quote. I like, I, I changed the name of the magazine to International Snowboard Magazine the next issue because I was like, okay, I'm going to get with the program. Jake's yeah. been doing this a long time. Yeah. Way longer than I have. And I want to be part of this revolution mm -hmm. and I'm, I don't want to screw it up either. Right. Cause we were, it was a, it was a balance of let's be, let's do us right as best we can, yeah. but let's also show them that we can be reasonable yes. patrons, totally responsible individuals, a market and we a, are a real a market. market. We are to, a market. To, to grow this so right. more people can enjoy this joy that we have. Yeah. And, and really that's, I felt like, that's what we were all in it for. Thank you for doing what you did, dude. Hey, Amen. It, it was a pleasure. Thank you for starting this thing on this path. How hard was it to, to do the last issue or were you just blown out and you're like, I'm done? Well, you know, it's, a, it's kind of a story where it was, it was a really deep recession in the country. Snowboarding was going down. The magazine industry was going down. It was just, you know, running a small business, and I'm looking at Joel Gomez right here, is not easy. It's a challenge every single day, and you have to really be brave to do something like this. Yeah. And after doing it for nine years, eight or nine years, you know, it was just too much of a struggle. And I, I really did want to sort of go to something new. Yeah. And so the last issue wasn't even planned. It was sort of like there just wasn't a subsequent issue. Wow. And so um, there wasn't – even when we did the last issue, there was no plan to shut down ISM or not go forward. But the economics, you know, they don't lie, you know. And so, you know, you, you got to compensate your people well. Yeah. That was getting tougher. Yeah. And the competition, quite honestly, the, the publications that were well-funded and investing deeply into the sport, yeah. much more so than an individual like Tom Shea could – I mean, they, they were strong competitors. They came in and yeah. scooped. And, you know, we had, a, we had a great advantage early on, yep. as, as you think we would, you know, being early early in. Yeah. But, uh, you know, ultimately, if you look around who's actually prevailed, you got to, you know, you got to have some resources or just be an extremely good business person. There are no magazines left. The rest, the, the people that are here now, yeah. it's passion and yeah. it's... It's blood from a stone. Yeah. And well, it's, it's like what you're doing. Yeah, I mean, yeah. you're doing, you're, you're following your passion. Yeah. I can this see is that. passion. I love it. And I love uh, it. you're, 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 you're a storyteller now. This is now going to be part of the record. Right. For right. snowboarding. Well, that's the reason I even asked. Years. I'm like, I've never thought about the last issue episode of this. In the first three years, I was like, every episode was the last one. Yeah. I was like, wow, that was so much work. Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't need to do this anymore. Yeah, exactly. And then when they offered me money to do it, I right. was like. I don't think I should take the money because then I can't stop because I'm going to get stuck on needing that money. Yeah. And now here I am nine years later, I quit my job and yeah. I'm, this is what I'm doing I mean, because I love it. Yeah. But I've been able to keep it wicked small, like you said, yeah. Yeah. working with more people and then it, it expands yeah. because you've got a lot of work to do. Yeah. Uh, I, I have to just keep it tight. Yo, you're living the dream, brother. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And you know what I would do? I would do this for free. If that was what it came down right to, on, right because, on, yeah. uh, be, because look at where I am. Yeah. Look at what we did yesterday. That dozen people oh. that were ripping that chair yesterday. What, what a day yesterday. That you I couldn't mean, pay. I, you couldn't put a price on no. 
riding in that group. No. You couldn't. You know, like that's yeah. that's the maturity of our of our sport now yeah. is such that yeah. you could pay to go ride with Sean White for a day. And yeah. I don't know, twenty grand or whatever yeah. the fuck it is. Yeah. You could. That's that priceless. Was priceless. That, that was priceless. priceless. If you were yeah. to auction that off somewhere and say, "This is you got you're going to yeah. have Donnerski Ranch <laughs> for you know four hours with some of the greatest legends untracked <laughs> untracked come on and you'd be that would auction for a, yeah i don't know how much you know? it's priceless it's just <laughs> it's priceless. priceless it isn't yeah. something that you could put a yeah. money value on so that yeah. for me is the i'm you yeah 40 years later getting yeah. the stoke out of people yeah. enjoying that i'm you know doing yeah. something for the community well as people in the media like you are um one of our superpowers and and when we were a magazine we knew this is the power of recognition you know um jay jay quinlan i rode with him this afternoon this smoke morning and jay smoke and jay and he was just telling me that when he got that feature in ism it just blew his whole world up and you know, I, I hear this these stories, and uh, you know, it, it's it's uh, wonderful that that people felt that way. And what you do, and the people you highlight, you do the same thing. And what the organizers of the Tahoe Legends do by recognizing yeah. industry and snowboarding legends every year is the same exact thing. They're they're using their superpowers for good, which I love. Yeah, if yeah. you if, if listeners out there, if you are looking for something cool to do, the mecca of snowboarding, doing the doing the coming and seeing the roots of snowboarding yeah still snowboarding still snowboarding then you know book your room next year yeah get, come, come up to here, ski ranch. pay for your lift tickets yeah. support this place yeah, absolutely and, and race the race and run the event yeah and, or just and, come here for the weekend and, and check it out it's yeah. just such a rad yeah. spot i it's love this amazing. mountain it's I, amazing I mean, this is where we yeah. grew up we grew up learning how to drop down these lines on the face, you know, Hollywood, on, on Hollywood performers. Clips. Oh, wow. And people were just like blown away. <laughs> yeah, you know? they were. And, uh, you know, <laughs> Damien Sanders went big off the face here on the fingers. I mean, you know. I love and it. And today I watched a couple guys like take some good lines down today, you know. Sick, sick. And it's it's just like magical here. Yeah, yeah. love it's it. It's been a great weekend. Hope Amazing. to be back again soon. Tom Shea, thanks for doing the show, dude. Yeah, thank you that for having great. me. Yeah. Thank you for having me. Keep thanks on. For taking that time. All right, you appreciate bet. it. Thanks. F and Rad shoutouts this week to Tom Shea. Thanks for doing the show, man. And thanks for starting the ball rolling for snowboarding media almost 40 years ago. Big thank you to Donner Ski Ranch. And thank you each and every one of the Patreon listeners. Your support keeps the show going. Be sure to come back next week for another episode of F and Rad Snowboarding, presented by Skyview Campers and brought to you by F and Rad Productions.